night follows the day. It's Friday. That means it's Sports Bites here. And it also recently has met a visit with Mason Kern. And Mason, radio guy, where? Is the NBC Sports Radio on Sunday, 7.30 to 8 a.m. Most important for them to let you come down here. we got to at least let them know, right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, there you go. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so much to talk about. So little time, yeah. particularly when you're talking about an overlapping period of time during the season right now. But, you know, football hasn't started, uh, and the NBA season is in the playoffs, but there's so much talk going on about all of them. No more talk. No more talk about any sport in town than the Diamondbacks. What is it that happened from the last season and their playoff time? Yeah, I know. I mean, they look really good right now after a really hot start. They're 13-5, and five, and really notably, I think they're 5-1 and one against the Dodgers, who were their conference rival kind of from last season, who I predicted would get, kind of give them some trouble at the beginning of this season. But they've done a really good job against this Dodger team. I think it has a lot to do with their bullpen and their pitching. They've done really well. I mean, in one of their most recent games against the Giants, Patrick Corbin almost threw a no-hitter. Yeah. I mean, he threw a complete game shutout. And then, I mean, their bullpen, I mean, Archie Bradley, Brad Boxberg, those guys are really doing well. Obviously, you have Paul Goldschmidt, who's kind of a perennial NL MVP candidate. And then David Peralta leaving, leading off. He's kind of leading the team in batting average right now. So I think overall they're just being really consistent. And this Diamondbacks team is really looking pretty scary, and I'm sure a lot of the MLB teams are kind of nervous to play them right now. But so far they've also been able to overcome the injuries, and they've had a couple of serious ones. Yeah, I mean, Taiwan Walker just went down with an apparent UCL injury. They don't know if it's a tear or whatnot, but uh, they're... Could be Tommy Johnson. It surgery. could be, yeah, and they're kind of preparing for that. Also with, um, I mean, uh, both uh, Shelby Miller is out as well. They don't know if he's going to be able to come back until kind of May. He had Tommy Johns as well. So both of those two guys down, I mean, that's a big, big hit to their pitching. But, I mean, I think they have the bullpen necessary to, to kind of bounce back from that and still remain consistent throughout the rest of this season. And Souza is apparently on the way back. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's definitely, like I said, a good, I mean, before, he, uh, we've talked about this before, Steven Souza, a great pickup in the offseason, so hopefully he'll be able to kind of come off the, the injury list pretty soon. Okay, let's talk hoops. Uh, you got the combination of topics with the draft and also who the coach is going to be. Yeah. So why don't you clear that whole thing up? Yeah, I mean, the Suns, obviously not the best team in the NBA at all this season. Actually, the worst team yes. record-wise in the NBA this season. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the, a lot needs to change within this organization, I think. They'll probably have the number one pick, depending on how the lottery shakes out. Probably going to take either DeAndre Ayton from the University of Arizona or Luka Doncic from overseas. Either of those guys would be a great fit. I mean, Ayton already has kind of said he'd want to play uh, for Phoenix because, like I said, he played at the University of Arizona, I think it'd be a good fit. Mason, you said probably, they're probably going to have the number one pick. They never get the number one. I mean, yeah, I, it kind of shakes out depending on how the lottery goes, but they did have the worst record in the league this year, 21 right. and 61. The percentages so. should be on their side. Yeah, exactly, this year. And then okay, in terms what about of the coach? Yeah, in terms of coaching, they just had an interview with uh, former Hawks coach Mike Budenholzer. Apparently, he's pulled out of consideration. Yeah, yeah, um, he, uh, as he of said, Stuart. don't bother, yeah, I'm not interested. I'm not interested, so, so he's out. So I kind of look toward... Um, Former Memphis Grizzlies coach David Fisdale, oh, also yeah. Jay Triano, who who obviously was the interim this year, but I don't know if they're going to want to do that experiment again. Obviously, Earl Watson didn't work out. A name that not many people are talking about though is Jason Kidd from Milwaukee. I think I mean obviously he played for Phoenix at one point. He could be a guy that they might throw into the mix who could kind of motivate Devin Booker, train him up, and Jason Kidd might be a really good fit for this. We got to talk Cardinals. Yeah, that draft is the most talkable thing probably in sports right now. Yeah, very much so. Who do you think that they're going to get, the Cardinals, in their number 15 position in the first round? I mean, given that they don't trade up or if they don't go down, if they stay at 15, I think there's two names really that, that people are talking about right now. Obviously, they did just get Sam Bradford on that one-year $20 million contract, but offensive tackle Mike McGlinchey from Notre Dame yeah. is the non-quarterback option that I think a lot of people are kind of circling around right now. This week's sports Illustrated, they said that's who. Yeah, Mike McGlinchey, so so non quarterback, I think him, but I realistically think they're going to want a backup quarterback, and I think Lamar Jackson from Louisville is the guy that this Arizona Cardinals team is going to want to uh, lead them into the future. Exciting times. That's why we call <laughs> it bites, not just any bites, but sports bites. Mason Kern, thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks for having me.